Can you briefly tell us what what the EMI mandate is about and how wetlands are incorporated into the mandate of EMI? Firstly, thank you very much for the award. And a special thank you to Mondi as well um, for hosting this event. In terms of the EMI units for property and mandate, so one of the units, I, so I had a huge branch. I have approximately seven chief directorates. One of them is compliance, and uh, the other is enforcement. So this, uh, the enforcement unit, specifically the capacity development unit, the mandate um, is to ensure that we carry out our mandate, our functions, um, the duties of the EMIs, as they are commonly known as the green scorpions. And as we all know, the green scorpions are, it's, it, it, it encompasses all spheres. So you're looking at the three spheres of government from national, provincial, local. So it is huge. So the, so the training and the decision making that the EMIs do, we need to ensure that we have training that um, encompasses your scientific information. Um, so your expert scientific information, the scientists that are here, this information is critical and training and capacity building uh, is guided by that. We also look at the prevalence of the crime and we adapt our training based on the impact on critical ecosystems. So it's a fine balancing act. Um, not to belabor the point, but the wetland course, you know, in terms of compliance and enforcement, specifically my EMIs, it's a large collective. And as uh, Dr. Pitt Louis Krundlin has indicated, you know, we need you guys. We need to listen. We need to listen to the communities. We need the community's voice. We need to be able to take that into account and also look at how we are able to implement that. Uh, so we've hosted five courses so far, delivering training to approximately 148 compliance and enforcement officials. The course is uh, mainly practically, you know, it's practical orientated as well as uh, the theory, but we look at cases and lessons learned. So that's just briefly some of the mandate. But uh, yeah, it's a great honor to be here and I have a fantastic team. I must say thank you to Dr. Krunen, um, to Jacques Detoy in my enforcement sector that, um, you know, that ensures that we go out there, we hear the community voices, we need to listen, we need to be able to address the needs and, and it's appreciated as government. I know often NGOs and the community out there don't believe government is doing enough. But I can speak for DFFE as national that we are trying our best. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it's good to, to hear that there's adaptive management and, and obviously looking to see what is successful and what can be uh, improved on. And, and on that, what do you think has contributed most to the successes of, of, your, um, of your team? Thank you. Thank you. I think, as I've already alluded to, I think one of the critical aspects is looking at the community. Um, collaboration. We need you guys. As government, especially now, we are sitting with fiscal constraints, we're sitting with capacity constraints, we are financial constraints, and as DFFE, we really take, you know, invest uh, in, in terms of the community, in terms of looking at how we can implement our mandate. So the network and the energy that we are getting from you guys helps us. Uh, so I think the challenges is we need to diversify, especially now. We need to look at how we can collaborate better. And yeah, I think if, you know, like we say, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but not their own facts. 
and my background is largely legal. So when we are taken to court, one of the aspects that I look at mm -hmm. is what scientific evidence do we have to support decision making. We need the science. We need that to be able to argue cases. And we look at sustainable development. So in order for us to support sustainable development, the science, it needs to be science-based. And I can speak, my minister always, when we look at going, when we go to court, we look at what scientific evidence do we have to support our decision making. And I think that collaboration and networking is so critical. Thank you. I think, um, lastly, um, as you can see, this, there's no one over the age of 35 here. Um, I'd, I'd like for you to, um, I'd like for you to give, uh, if you have any advice for our up and coming wetlanders or as we would like to call them, wetland warriors. I think the warriors is quite good. Uh, what we want to do is that we want to go out there to be able to encourage you guys to go out to the remote areas, do what you do best, continue developing your ability and reach out to those who share your own passion and understanding. I think that, that you know, we need to protect our environment for future generations. And yeah, so I think we would welcome you. Uh, we've got learnerships, we've got interns that we take on. So look out for that. We have entities that report to my department, uh, sand, sand parks,